Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. We're coming to you from the Tisch WNET studio here in the heart of Lincoln Center. I'm going to introduce the young man next to me, uh, Terrence McNally. It just says play right here. That's ridiculous. You are a national treasure. You've done, um, you said you've been in the business almost 60 years, but not. Getting close, getting close 56, I think. Uh, how about this? Yeah. Can I just give you a quick uh, sense of this, Bob Morris, as we're, we're our director doing this? Uh, right now, Fire and Air, new play. And uh, in rehearsals, right? Yeah. Uh, Anastasia? On Broadway. Okay. Broadway. 44th Street. How about this? Kiss of the Spider Woman. Ragtime. Uh, uh, what, what is it again? Say that. Love, Valor, Compassion. What, uh, Frankie and Johnny. What are you, an underachiever? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I just do what I love. I love what I do. How'd you get so. into it? I think I, I was very lucky. My grandfather, I didn't grow up in the city. I grew up all over America, but mainly Texas. That's where I hit adolescence. That's when life, mm. you remember things when the hormones are raging. I had a grandfather who lived in New York, and he was sort of sophisticated. Wow. And I'd come to New York sometimes in the summer, and when I was about six, he took me to see Ethel Merman and Annie Get Your Gun. What did it do for you? She, I just said, this is great. Didn't think I wanted to be a playwright. Then when I was about 10 or 11, he took me to see The King and I with Gertrude Lawrence and Yul Brynner, and I thought, we don't have this in Texas, but I still wanted to be a journalist. When did you come from New York? Uh, 17, when I went to Columbia. 23, your first play. I haven't left since. You, haven't, you, you love this city. Uh, yeah, truly, but I still feel like a visitor here. I don't feel like a New Yorker. I don't think I ever will. You know, you, you told me, Terrence, before we, got, we started the program, that you did your first play at 23. Three or four, yeah. Really, and you said yeah. it ran for a couple of weeks. You said it was mm -hmm. not a huge hit. Mm -hmm. um, not at all. Biggest changes? in theater, in the theater, in this city, over these few mm -hmm. years? There's less of it, and the stakes are higher. It's not just the productions cost more, it's just the odds are stacked against you in because? a way. New York was totally a theater town when I came here. Now, theater is a niche part of New York, I'd say. Everybody in New York knew My Fair Lady. When I first came to New York, everybody in New York wanted to see My Fair Lady. You know, it was like, well, I've never been to it, but I live in New York. I'm a New Yorker. You know, we got My Fair Lady and right. Mark Hellinger. The way the teams, the town is proud of its team. Everybody in New York was proud of Broadway. And that, I don't feel that's quite as true. So, so I don't want to make too big a deal about yeah. Hamilton, but did it well, change anything? Hamilton? So, uh, yeah. Oh, sure, sure. For theater? Yeah. How oh, so? yeah, yeah. Oh, well, just culturally, that there's a whole new kind of music being heard. And the, it broke every barrier and cast. No audiences, much. potentially? It's getting audiences that have never seen a show before, Broadway show, which is great. Not everybody's as mm. lucky to have a grandfather take them to see Ethel Merman mm. when they're six years old. But that's how you get an audience for tomorrow, is get young people into those seats. As we show some footage from Anastasia, talk about it, why it matters. What drew you well, to it? Well, I think it's a wonderful story. It's a modern fairy tale. It's sort of based on history. I mean. You know, the Romanov family was shot down by the Bolsheviks, but there, there was a body missing in the mass grave. Where was the Princess Anastasia? Mm. They finally proved as late as mid-90s, 1995, they found bones in another grave. They've identified it as hers. But people wanted to believe this romantic, wonderful mm. story that one girl survived, and she found her family. She reconnected. So the big themes of the show are love, home, family. And I think that's very instinctual in all of very us. Very much at the core. And it's romantic. And what I also love is the Russian Revolution was the end of old, old Europe. And what was going on in Paris, where the second act takes place, is the beginning of the explosion of the arts, what we call Stravinsky, Picasso. They were all, So we have a repressive first act and a very joyful second act in Paris, City of Light and Hope and... It's really just all these things appeal to me when they ask me to do it. Let me ask you, sorry for interrupting, uh, a musical, a yeah. musical versus... Um, a play, yeah. Fire and Air. Yeah. Very different? Oh, very different, because the book stops 100% with me. I Explain wrote every that. word of it. Well, in a musical, when they sing a song, I hope you like the song, but I had nothing to do with right. it. You know, I, my shoulders <laughs> can drop a little bit. But a play just comes out of my head. All on you? Yeah, it's all on me. And... Uh, and then Anastasia, I hope you feel one person wrote it, but actually I wrote it with Lynn Ahrens and Stephen Flaherty. We've written it's our third musical. Ragtime is our most known at this mm. point, and which I think is a great, great permanent addition 
to the repertory. I'm very proud of that show. I think good musicals are based on big stories. And Anastasia, uh, my preferred version would have been eight hours long. There's so many wonderful events I had to leave out. Mm. Ragtime, every page of that novel just leaps to me, to my mind, this would be great on, in the theater. Terrence, for those, who have no, those of us who have no clue as to how you do what you do. Yeah, I don't either. Char but <laughs> Stop. I don't. I, I work on instinct. Okay, but you got characters. Yeah. Still, yeah. What, how do they, for what's, what comes first? What comes first? Always character. character. Always. Yeah, and a situation. There has to be a situation. You can be the most interesting man in the world, but if you live by yourself in a room, <laughs> no one's going to know you're interesting. So the playwright puts that interesting man in an interesting situation. Wow. And well, like, describe, sorry, uh, fire and air, describe it. Uh, well, <clears throat> it, interesting situation there. A guy decides that all Russia is based on European art and it's nothing authentically Russian and he wants to drag Russia into the 20th century. Mm. The same time the revolution is happening, he wants to get rid of tutus in Swan Lake and Tchaikovsky and come up with Rite of Spring, Afternoon of the Fawn, Stravinsky, Debussy, Picasso, people like that. And it's the invention of the 20th century, this one man who came from the sticks. So I identify with him. I grew up in you Corpus, I grew up pretty much in Corpus Christi, Texas. He grew up in a place called Perm, Russia, but the word Diaghilev means great empresario who had the gift to bring the right people to, into the room, the rehearsal room. That's what a great. I'm curious about something else about yeah. you. Um, so many things fascinate me about what you do and how you interact with people um, in this sense. Given the fact that you're um, a mature and experienced <laughs> professional in the field, yeah. I, I hear so much talk about dealing with millennials and how challenging it mm. is. And, and, and again, in broadcasting and in my work, we have a whole range of very talented so-called millennials. Do you see any significant difference in interacting and engaging so-called millennials in the work that you do in theater versus anyone else? Uh, Loaded question, I, I know. I, yeah, I, I think, I think theater appeals to something so basic in the human spirit to be told a good story, to sit around a campfire, and the village elder is telling us a myth, a story, and it goes back to the Greek theater. They went and saw plays. They knew the plot of Oedipus Rex mm. before the curtain went. Well, they didn't have curtains before the sun set. They knew. They knew it was going to end badly, but they learned something by the ritual of theater, of being, told, being reaffirmed of basic human values. And I think that'll always be true. Transcends age. It really does. I don't worry about theater dying. I worry about, I wish we had a theater that was more accessible to people with less money. Huh. I don't like seeing it become considered, oh, it's for the elite, the 1%. No, theater is, Broadway used to be a community theater. I'd like to see that happen again. I'm part of the community. You know, it's not cheap to go to a Yankees game either. No, it's so not. For those of us who are Yankees cheap. fans. Yeah, so, so, you know, we've got to... But I don't think we're going to go away. Last uh, question. Advice for those who say they want to do what... <laughs> I love when people say do what you do because they have no idea what yeah, you do, but yeah. they want to write uh, in the theater. Tell your own story, you know. Oscar Wilde said it best. Be yourself. Everybody else is taken. And so many young people, they, I'm going to write Hamilton again. No. Hamilton's be written, it's been written. Write your Hamilton. Make it up. You're the only one who can tell your story. And if, when I try to teach, if I can get someone to speak in their own voice, I feel they've, I've succeeded. You know, don't sound like anybody else. And you're, and you're we really are unique. But it's very hard to find that. You know, we're told, sure be like everybody else. Don't be in the arts, you'll be poor. Well... Terrence McNally, it says here national treasure. You're more than that. You're a teacher, and you're a well, motivator, and you, you inspired a bunch of people. And by the way, do you mind if I tell everyone again? Uh, Anastasia over at... Um, ambassador. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Where is it? It's at the... Bro I thought it was at the... The Broadhurst. The Broadhurst. I'm said sorry. I, I'm yeah, plugging. I Let me do yeah, the plugging. Okay. <laughs> over on 44th Street in uh, Fire and Air. At CSC in, on 13th Street. Look at you. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you very much. Any time. pleasure. Be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. 
This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Investors Bank, Seton Hall University, PSENG, Hackensack Meridian Health, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, and by the New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.